two coffees from the farm da Terra in Brazil has made its way to you for this subscription round. And I'm joined today by Samuel Marila. Hello, hello. Long-term barista, roaster and origin sourcing guy. Let's uh, start getting some coffee in our cups. Yes, please. Datera was actually, together with Vista Mosa, the coffee farm that we've worked with for the longest time. I used their coffee in the World Barista Championship back in 2006. Since then, we've had a very long-term and mutual mm. beneficial collaboration. But tell us a little bit about what kind of farm is Datera? Datera is uh, quite different from the other farms that we work with. One thing is, in terms of size, Datera is huge. Mm. The farm covers an area that is... Uh, almost incomprehensible. So when you go there in harvest time, when uh, the cherries are mature, you just see endless rows of mature cherries all over. And if you're so lucky to go there in the blossom time, there's just white blossoms all over. And this uh, perfumed smell from, yes. the, from the flowering. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In, really, really strong. What sets it apart is that the, the maturation is so even, the flowering is so even, and it's done on these, uh, how do you say, like plateaus, plains. Mm -hmm. So it's not on steep hills like many yeah. of the other producers that we work with. So that enables them to use machinery to harvest. Yeah. Also, it's so huge that the, you need machines. You couldn't harvest it by hand. Yeah. And then, of course, the way that they keep the, the dry milling, the wet mill and so on, yeah. they have really state-of-the-art everything. Like typically a farmer will take their coffee mm. to another dry mill to get it milled, but they're so big that they can yeah. actually have the whole thing in-house and do yeah. all the exporting themselves as yeah. well, pack it into a container and ship it directly yeah. to us. Exactly. And <laughs> they not only have one dry mill, they yeah. have two dry mills. Yeah, two dry I mills. just have to it's, say it. Yeah. So everything that we get, which are like uh, special lots, masterpieces, or the, the our own project, which is our plot, that's everything is being milled at its own wet mill and its own dry mill. But what is still surprising is that they're not even like the biggest farm in Bristol or anything. I've uh, been to I've crazy. been to what I've heard is the biggest, mm. and that is still yeah. humongously bigger yeah. than Dutcher, which is is on another level. Yeah. And to some extent, I think a lot of coffee buyers we are actually not that fond of these like types of huge farms mm. because typically you'll see quality is not mm. the the main focus. There's also something about the sustainability part of it that's not terrific. But I think this is where uh, Daterra is a very interesting yeah. exception. Luis Pascual, who owns the farm and who started this uh, project, really wants it to be a leading by example kind of farm. Mm. So he's invested heavily in more biodiversity in protecting lands in a lot of experimentation on seeing how can you actually improve coffee farming and then sharing that knowledge yeah. with other farms as well. They're also like us a B Corp which I find uh, mm. super interesting. Uh, again one of the only farms I know of that is B Corp certified. Mm. So the two coffees are called Blossom mm. and Sweet Yellow. So let's start with the easy one. So Sweet Yellow yeah, because it's sweet. Aha. Uh -huh. And it's composed only of yellow varieties. So it's composed of uh, yellow katuai, and then an exciting variety that has been quite hyped the last couple of years, which is called Paraiso. Mm. And Paraiso is a strictly yellow variety. Okay. And so it's a mix of those two. So how would you describe the, the sweet yellow here? I mean, it's the good, basic, high quality Daterra coffee, which has this uh, pleasant nuttiness, sweetness. It's not so many dimensional it's it's a little bit of acidity high sweetness quite clean uh, it's a really good base coffee so this was a, a similar blend to the coffee i chose to, to yeah. compete with yeah. back when and tasting it the first time i thought it was the perfect sort of baseline coffee for playing mm -hmm. around with espresso blending and mixing yeah. components and so on because it has those qualities there's mm. very little acidity there's a huge mouthfeel, very big body. Mm. It's uh, it's super sweet and it's incredibly clean. And that gives you that if you want to do blends and play around with mm. with that particular thing in, in espresso brewing, it gives you that sort of canvas to say, okay, what can you add then to that? That there is a lead example on having these types of coffee, being so incredibly clean, being mm. every bag, mm. being very consistent yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. So going to the blossom. Blossom, it's uh, quite an interesting story. So Blossom is uh, made of a, not a variety really, but a selection, one could say, called Guarani. 
which comes from the variety Aremosa. Yeah. And the reason that Guarani is not a variety is that they had Aremosa at their fields and then they saw that some parts of the Aremosa they produced more beans and so they took them yeah. and they, they have, um, how do you say, kept breeding on them, mm -hmm. solely on those. And so they named it Guarani. So it's like a selection of the Aramosa variety. And blossom comes from that it blossoms more or? Take a sip and you will feel the blossoms ah. in your mouth. No, it comes from the, so, so the way that, that Sarah gives the name to the coffees is partly due to what varieties is used. Then it's also what the coppers at the Terra, what they find in the cup profile. So that might also influence the name of the coffee. So this coffee they named Blossom because they found uh, quite heavy floral aromatics yeah. in the coffee. And both of these coffees are processed the same way or is the processing also done differently between the two? So you could say that 50% of the coffees are processed the same way, in the sense that the sweet yellow is a pure pulp natural and the uh, blossom is a mix of natural and pulp natural. Naturals in Brazil tend to actually over ripen and dry out mm. a little bit on the trees. So because when you're machine harvesting you can't do uh, selective hand picking, that's the opposite of machine harvest mm. you can say. Uh, so with machine harvest you need to let the majority of the tree ripen to a stage where it's fully ripe. That means that you will have some underripe and you will have some overripe. But in Brazil, because the dry climate, mm. the overripes doesn't rot like I would see them do in Kenya, for example. Mm. Instead, they just start to dry out and shrivel. Mm. And those are then picked together with underripes. And then there's a huge sorting process after harvesting. So underripes to one side, fully ripes to one, which is the pulp natural. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, overripe, the dried ones that almost look like a raisin, uh, will go to the naturals. Mm -hmm. The naturals, you basically have those, they dry them and hold them. That's pretty much it, yep. to keep it simple. But the pulp natural, mm -hmm. I think a lot of uh, our viewers have heard about honey processed, semi-washed, yep. pulp natural. In Danish, we say a uh, dear child has many names, mm -hmm. but what is the pulp natural process like at the Terra? Uh, again, this is where the Terra really distincts uh, themselves uh, from many other producers. Is that so? The pulp natural is even a. You can divide that into. I think it's seven categories uh, because their machinery is set to so finely tuned set so that they have the pulp naturals that are really ripe and then all the way to, yeah, less ripe. Because the pulp natural is defined also by the amount of pressure you use, to, you use when you squeeze the cherry to get the bean out. Yeah. Literally, it's like when you peel the skin of almonds. You apply pressure to mm -hmm. the skin, and the, or to the almond, and then the seed, or mm -hmm. the, yeah, comes out of it. And that's pretty much it. But I actually think, and I've always really enjoyed the pulp naturals from the terror because you have that really good combination of fully ripe cherries, so mm. you have the maximum development of sweetness, and then you don't have any uh, additional um, fermentation going on. Yeah, like yeah. It's very controlled, so you don't develop more acidity, you don't mm. develop any off notes, so you can keep a really clean yeah. uh, taste profile. Why did you choose these two coffees for our subscribers? Because these are exclusives mm -hmm. just for you. The sweet yellow I think is, in a sense, the best display of the Terra, meaning that this is the our like uh, the Terra flagship coffee. So here you really get the, the cleanest or the most pure uh, sense of what the Terra is for us. And, uh, I, and I really want to stress that actually, yeah. because I think the Terra does a lot of really fun things, the anaerobic that we also yeah, yeah, yeah. have and, and so on. Our reason for choosing to work with the Terra mm. originally has been because of this, mm -hmm. because it has this just magnificent clean profile. When we get two coffees at the same time, it's really nice to have something which for me, either you want to have something as a really nice base and then something on the side that really stands out, or you want two free coffees that just, yeah, you know, does different things. Mm -hmm. But so here, it's the Terra, sweet yellow, the base, and then we bring in the blossom, and the blossom has 
some florality, it has some of the natural notes, so you get a bit a bit more fruitiness and so on. Mm -hmm. And it's really going to stand apart when you compare it to the sweet yellow. Yeah, and show um, what you can actually do, yeah. even at the same farm, even at this altitude in yeah. Brazil and so on, that you can still yeah. create more subtle uh, differences. Yeah. And I like the differences here as well because it's not as full on as taking a, a washed and a yeah. anaerobic natural or something. Yeah. We're we are still diving a little bit more into the subtleties of uh, differences. Yeah. yeah, and then one has to say also that Terra has, um, even though it's sometimes anaerobically uh, processed and so on, the Terra has for me at least quite a like a base taste, yeah. which is this uh, Cerrado or Brazilian the nuttiness, the mm -hmm. sweetness, and yeah. so on. So you're going to find that in both of the cups. Yeah. So it's not going to be like Klaus said, it's not going to be like you have this crazy anaerobic and then a crazy washed and so yeah. on. It is quite similar, but with differences. Yeah. Yeah. And I hope you'll enjoy that like milk chocolatey yeah. nougat kind of thing as well that mm -hmm. uh, I'm really enjoying these. Yeah. yeah. All right. But since Daterra really is a coffee that we, uh, we are initially bought for mm. espresso and since we really think it works well, I'm just going to brew us a couple of espressos so we can taste those as well. Nice. So, I brewed these 19.0 grams in, 38 grams out, so Perfect. complete one to two ratio. Yeah, the Lamarsoco here with built-in scales make it very easy to nail it. I took it at 26 seconds. This is using a really clean RO remineralized water, about 50, 60 ppm. It's at a temperature of uh, 93 and a half degrees, measured in the group head, using a VST 18 gram basket. All right, cheers. And it's the sweet yellow that I chose to brew for us. Perfect. Yeah, I think it's, it's really a fantastic espresso. It's so, in some way, it's so simple. It's like just pleasing. It's mm. like a creme brulee. You don't need a lot. You no. just need something that's really tasty, really good. Yeah. Um, but it's very, yeah, it's very milk chocolatey to me. Incredibly clean. And I must admit, I really enjoy getting these espresso here because often we have these so aromatic espresso, so acidic espressos. And sometimes when you get this, it's so easy and convenient yeah. and just nice. Yeah. yeah, and I think definitely if I were to only have this and drink this every day, I would get super bored. I would want something like to provoke to, and challenge me yeah. and more acidity and yeah. so on. But when if that's all you have as well, that becomes yeah. really the same. So it's it's a, such a pleasure to dive into this mm. very low acidity, yeah. uh, very pleasing, very sweet, full-bodied kind of espresso. Yeah, I deliberately kept the shot time at, at 26, which I tend to actually uh, gravitate more towards 27, 28 seconds uh, with, with this kind of recipe for a lot of our other coffees. But I think with this one, a slightly faster sh uh, shot time actually gives it a better balance. I don't think you really need to push the extraction mm. because it's a very soluble coffee. It's a, it is a pulp natural. Uh, it's a lower density bean compared to if you go to Ethiopia yeah. or Bolivia and so on because there's lower altitude as well. So it's quite easy to extract. I also think the margin of error, if you can call it that, is much wider. It's more forgiving coffee. So even if you under extract it slightly, you might get a little bit more like that nutty nougat kind of uh, flavor out on espresso. If you over extract it, you will get more like a, a cacao powdery kind of taste out of it. But it won't taste awful in either case. And that's, uh, I think, is, yeah, makes it quite easy to mm -hmm. work with. And then combining it with milk is really like just yeah milk chocolate in yeah. your in your cappuccino. Yeah. It is, it is, and also uh, from the roasting part, it's uh, roasted slightly more developed than many of our other coffees. Also, mm -hmm. give it giving it a bit more. How do you say it in English? Porosity. Yeah, or? solubility basically. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, so yeah. what you say about yeah. the brewing and so on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Makes and you sense. roasted this coffee uh, as well, actually. So uh, we should we should note that as well. That full circle. No, yeah, full circle. Yeah. You uh, you should have brewed the espresso then. I mean, you're also a barista. Class, you were here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I take that on. But uh, thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure. Thank thanks for sharing your insights into Daterra. Uh, I hope you'll go to visit them uh, soon again. Yeah, me too. At some point. Yeah. And thank you a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time with uh, two other coffees. Probably something completely different. Probably. Thank you.